Only real movie fans notice these in Knock at the Cabin. The new apocalyptic horror movie, Knock at the Cabin, keeps the audience guessing throughout the story. It's the cinematic adaptation of Paul Tremblay's award-winning 2018 novel called The Cabin at the End of the World, just like the other movies by M. Night Shyamalan. This movie is filled with just enough clues about the inevitable twist to keep you sitting at the edge of your seat. In today's video, we'll tell you about six things about the new movie, Knock at the Cabin, which only real movie fans would have noticed. But before we start, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Number one, the old school look. In this adaptation of the book, The Cabin at the End of the World, M. Night Shyamalan, being a Hollywood director known for his contemporary plots, twists the story and somehow makes it even more interesting. When it comes to storytelling, Tremblay and Shyamalan are completely different. Where Tremblay likes to ask questions, Shyamalan answers them all. Tremblay's stories are full of uncertainty and complexity. Shyamalan likes plot twists, but his stories leave no room for doubt. However, along with enjoying plot twists, M. Night Shyamalan has excellent attention to detail and focuses on all the technical matters of filming. You'd have definitely noticed the vintage or old school look of this movie, and it is not an accident. Rather, Shyamalan carefully chose the vintage look because it's a 90s horror, so it has to be different from contemporary horror films. Plus, there's an obvious lack of smartphones. While Knock at the Cabin will keep its mysteries under wraps until the exact day of its theatrical debut, Shyamalan Mellon has shared a number of intriguing facts about the production. Number two, the grasshopper jar. As usual, there's more going on than you may anticipate. The opening scene of the movie shows a little girl called Wen trying to catch grasshoppers in a jar while sitting in an open field when a huge man in heavy boots approaches her in typical foreboding Shia Mellon style. Then she uses colored pencils to write adorable comments and facts about different grasshoppers, giving them names in the process. When she is approached by Leonard, a big yet sympathetic figure played by Dave Bautista, she first hesitates to talk to the stranger, but she eventually engages Leonard in conversation and learns that he too likes to catch grasshoppers. He cautions her to be gentle so as to not startle them, foreshadowing what will come later in the movie. He also warns her that he and his friends are on a very important mission. While the friends are hidden, we can hear them shuffling through the brush. Soon, the strangers with a prophetic visions imprison Wen and her two dads, Andrew and Eric, in their cabin and make every effort to keep them quiet as they chose to sacrifice one of their own. This obviously doesn't turn out to be as smooth as they thought. The cabin itself is like the grasshopper jar. Once inside, there's no way out. And while confining the family in the cabin, the four strangers provide for their medical requirements, protect Wen, and share their backstories to help the family understand and empathize. Number three, Leonard is a good teacher. Leonard is gentle and sympathetic despite possessing the body of a former WWE star, but he warns Wen that he and his friends have come because Wen's parents must make an awful heartbreaking choice. We quickly learn about Adrienne, a young mother by herself, Redmond, a frustrated guy with a troubled background, played by Rupert Grint, and Sabrina, a nurse. The four have arrived as a result of terrifying visions they have had that appear to show the end of the world. Even Leonard, who admits to being an elementary school teacher, doesn't seem to be eager for the blood despite the group's frightening message and slightly more sinister weaponry. When he explains the situation to Wen and her parents, it's impossible to not but think how good of a teacher he must be. Number four, instilling empathy. Real movie fans would have noticed that the TV plays an animated cartoon. After the four strangers break into the cabin and tie up Andrew and Eric, while keeping an eye on Wen. It's likely that Wen was watching this cartoon earlier in the day before leaving to catch grasshoppers. Leonard then makes an effort to keep things as informal and stress-free as he can by suggesting the cartoon seems entertaining and instructive. He continues by saying that, similar to a lot of children's entertainment, and promotes empathy and understanding in young viewers. Leonard then encourages the other strangers to talk about their pasts, careers, aspirations, and goals. The purpose of this is to help the family develop empathy for mankind as a whole because the strangers sent to the cabin all represented significant facets of humanity to save the planet. The family in the movie essentially needs to make the ultimate sacrifice, but that sacrifice cannot be undertaken alone. They must be made aware that if they doom the world, they will effectively be damning individuals who are similar to themselves and who have loving families and dreams. People tend to be less sympathetic when they are distanced from the pain of others, yet it is crucial to develop empathy for others, whether through children's cartoons or through learning about their lives. Number five, the flashbacks. We are reminded that this is a family that has endured the unthinkable in order to be together. When we see the flashbacks to events like the time they spent with Andrew's homophobic parents 
and they pretend to be brothers-in-law while meeting Wen at an orphanage. But the flashbacks also provide Eric and Andrew's perspectives on the world. As a hothead, Andrew won't like to talk with anyone he believes is trying to get him, and he won't even consider talking to anyone who could be a member of a homophobic religious cult. But Eric shows more empathy. He's more relaxed and composed. He is aware of the truthfulness of Leonard, Sabrina, Adrienne, and Redmond's statements. Number 6. Wen Lives just like the source material, two homosexual parents and their kids are frightened by four radical house invaders who declare the apocalypse is upon them, and the plot remains the same. But Shia Mallon's adaptation has a new twist, changing not just the conclusion, but also the themes, message, and tone. In the story, when Redmond passes away, Andrew manages to free himself from the chair he is bound to and get his revolver from the car. In the most painful scene of the novel, he shoots and murders Adrienne before fighting with Leonard. Soon, a stray gunshot kills Wen. Real movie fans would have noticed that Shia Mellon offers a far more direct portrayal of the events in the film adaptation of The Cabin at the End of the World. Andrew escapes from his bindings when Redmond and Adrian both willingly give their lives. He then takes his gun back and shoots Sabrina. Wen and Leonard get into a fight, but Wen escapes unharmed. Leonard instead takes his own life, leaving the family to determine what to do next. Number 7. Eric's Death If you've read the novel, the ending would have left you wondering if the apocalypse had occurred or whether the recorded calamities were merely coincidences. However, in the movie, Eric convinces Andrew to shoot him so that Wen can grow up to live the life they always wanted for her. Eric is certain that the four intruders are truly the four horsemen of the apocalypse and that the world will end soon if they don't act. Andrew pulls the trigger, but he was truly heartbroken. He then grabs Wen and the two go out of the cabin as we hear a gunshot and everything starts to quiet down. Andrew and Wen drive to the local cafe where they notice that all the calamities all seem to have subsided. Everything appears to be getting back to normal, whether it's the aircraft falling out of the sky or the virus that had been out of control. The song they had played on the way to their holiday then resumes playing as Andrew and Wen get back into their car. Each person takes turns turning it off and on while grieving in silence for the loss of a loved one. Eventually, they they drive off to start their lives without Eric. In the movie, Shia Mallon takes a more definitive approach, and Eric's decision to sacrifice himself prevents the deaths of countless numbers of people. How many of these things did you notice in the apocalyptic movie, Knock at the Cabin? And what do you think is the film adaptation better? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. We'll be back soon.